Okay, we're back with the build here. Um, so I got everything soldered in here. I don't have the motors leads on yet. I got the um, the um, VTX soldered in, and with the with the VTX, make sure that you you use your um, you solder your positive cable to where it's marked on the board. There's another one I have here to where it's marked um, seven by twenty four, and then the ground. Do not connect it to five volt. That's five volt out. Okay. Video in and out is right in the middle and in ground, but this is this is where you hook it up here. So seven to 25, 24 volts in your ground, and then your video wire is the one right here in the middle. So if you hook it up the other way, you're gonna blow something. Just let you know. Um, so everything's done here. Um, turn the VT, you know, the VTX to the side because I wanted to shorten this up a little bit. Like I said in previous uh, segment, there uh, got my shrink shrink wrap on I just have to put some tubes um, the tubes are gonna go Ooh, bump the camera sorry um, the tubes are gonna go right about here right in the front and that way I can thread my uh, my RX um, antennas right through the tube here so they have some protection um, then also too on it's not the Zeus's fault It's actually um, FR skies issue if you if you tend if you pick one of these up there's a real quick and easy way to get over the aversion junk and because a lot of the f4 boards just don't like the inversion stuff so what it is is right here and I'll, I'll put a picture up as well i'll see if i can get it real zoomed in here so basically i took i took off the um i think it was a transistor and a resistor or whatever and then just welded a wire straight through and what that did is i don't have to um, Um, the smart port is no longer the yellow wire on it it's now the green wire and it's in it's not ver inverted so you can just weld that to any pad and luckily HGLRC um, brought out these extra pads so that you can um, just go straight into them and then you can just configure it in beta flight so just open that port right there and then um, just select uh, smart port and there you go so that was really nice. Um, it had nothing to do with HGLRC. It has everything to do with FR Sky. The other thing I, um, what I don't like too about the FR Sky is I noticed that they're using this hardened plastic wire and, and this stuff is just horrible. So I wish more people would complain about these in reviews and get manufacturers to start using the silicon wire instead of, instead of this hard plastic stuff. Because what happens is, you know, even vibrations, these wires tend to break right off so um, you know I mean HDLRC use silicon wire for their for the little um, elf camera I don't, I don't know why every manufacturer just doesn't use the silicon wire um, this plastic junk is is exactly that's junk and it can actually vibrate off and break right not right off the board but right after the solder joint there so and that's typically what happens so I'll have to go back through here and and probably use some um, hot glue or something like that to secure these. Um, so uh, everything's pretty much done. On the VTX, if you get the VTX, let me turn this around a little bit here. Actually, let me just grab my spare one here. Okay. On the VTX, when you first fire up the HGLRC TX20 VTX, and it says so in the instructions, but some people might miss it because it is kind of it is kind of odd. Um, when you first fire it up, it's just going to give you a zero. And when you see zero, what that means is that currently the VTX has power, but it's off. Okay, it's not it's not sending out any signal whatsoever outside the antenna. So what you have to do to turn it on is you hold down the button for approximately four seconds, and then you're going to see some lines. It, it'll start out with a line in the middle here, just a little dot line that goes across the eight here. And that means you are now in 25 milliwatts then you if you click it as this is flashing it'll start to flash right here you click it once and you'll have two dots one on top here once or two slashes one on top one in the middle that means you're in 100 milliwatt mode and if you click it one more time you'll have this slash this slash in the middle and this slash here on the bottom and that means you're in the 250 watt mode i thought this thing only did 200 but i guess it does 250 so that's 
kind of unusual. That's kind of cool. So that's how you that's how you change that. So yeah, if you if you first turn this on, it'll be zero, um, and you're not you're not going to pick up anything off your headset at all. And it's like, okay, what's going on here? Did I do something wrong, or is, do I have a burned out unit? No, it's just turned off. Um, to to select channels, um, it's just a quick push to select the channel. To t to select the band, you have to hold it down for two seconds, and it'll flash A E. Um, there's also a U and an L band and the whole nine yards. So that, that's how it's done on that. So I just wanted to throw that in just in case it threw some guys off. So there you go. So now what I'm going to do is basically wrap this thing up, um, get my motor leads on, um, get the tubes here, the antenna tubes, uh, put in the front arms, get the shrink wrapping done, um, get this folded over and mounted up here on the top. And put the camera in and put the canopy on and i should be pretty much done so okay so the final build is done now um that's what it looks like so pretty cool stuff um just got to program it and yeah, finish with the motors programming through bl heli getting those set up and so that's pretty much about it it's a nice tight little build fits right in the atom v2 frame with a few modifications but very little no modifications on this i'm going to cut for a usb port so I, I don't have to keep taking the lid off i can just hook a usb to it and that's pretty much about it guys on that i'll show you the finished product uh, when i'm done and i'll show some flight videos okay so there's the atom v2 the poor man's edition version 2 um as you can see it's 187 grams with an 850 uh, milliamp package 3s um, that is about 40 grams lighter than it was before. Um, so that is, uh, that's pretty damn incredible. Um, I did do a lot, you know, before the version for the poor man's edition of the, uh, Atom V2, it had full size boards and it had a full size four in one Raystar ESC 20 amp. Um, it had a full size, well, bigger than full size, um, HGLRC f3 version 4 board in it and it also had a bigger um fr sky receiver in it as well so you can see here it's it's much lighter um this this is really amazing i'm this thing's gonna just turn and burn so i'm really kind i'm really digging it i can't wait to get it to fly out tomorrow and i'll be uploading those videos as well so thank you very much for watching this build um Hopefully, if this is what you want to do, you can build it from these videos. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And please give me a thumbs up if you like the effort that I took here uh, to kind of show off the the HDLRC Zeus and also the TX20 um, VTX. Um, so, you know, give me a thumbs up if you like it. I appreciate it. Have a good day, and we'll see you next time. Okay, welcome back. This is a special part of the video um, for a member that was asking about, he wanted to do this to his Atom V2 frame. And I forgot to mention a, a couple of things. First of all, the Zeus board will cover over the holes that are typically used um, to mount the FC and the FC stack, I should say, for the uh, stock V2. And also, ties into um, this hole right here on the canopy to, to fasten the canopy down well when you're using the Zeus here it's a little bit longer so it covers the the 30 millimeter or 30.5 millimeter um, mounting holes and so what I had to do is mount these here and what what this is, is a 440 these are 440 um, inch and a quarter brass uh, screws and how I did it was I just drilled a couple of holes right behind the Zeus board and then I just drilled a couple more holes right here the, this one here and that one there and that way it mounts straight on and so that's that's how I did that um, as far as the camera mount goes I just uh, what I did is I took the camera mount that comes with the Atom V2 kit and just modified it down as you can see there's a notch here and the reason there's a notch there is because of the odd shape of the run cam um, cameras 
and also of the Zeus. The Zeus is basically a run cam as well, so um, Swift Micro. So you have to kind of notch it out here so that it fits. So you have a shelf on one side, and it, and it kind of fits in there. And I'll, and I'll show you that what that looks like with this uh, this other run cam Micro I have. So basically, you can see it's a weird shape here on the bottom. So if you notch that out, the camera will fit solidly in place. You can see it sits solid and flat at a good angle and solid and a flat at a good angle. And then I just use silicone to silicone. I'm oh, sorry, I keep bumping the camera. It's too close. I keep, I just um, silicone the camera right into the mount is what I do. I just use a black, uh, black silicone. As you can see here, that's kind of what I did here. I know it looks kind of messy, but I, I did that. Um, this setup here holds that canopy on really, really well. In fact, so well, I actually, and I'll show that at the end of the flight video, I took this thing full force, upside down, inverted into the ground. Yeah, here's another shot of the stock mounting holes and where I drilled the new screws for the, to mount the canopy. But I, I literally took this craft full speed, upside down, into the ground. So hard, it literally broke the uh, ELF camera plastic housing here. Um, and it actually bent this screw. You can see the screw's uh, just a little bit bent. You know, it's way off. It's bent. That's how hard I hit this board, or I hit this uh, craft into the ground. Um, and it held all together. It, it didn't even break the, um, it didn't even break the canopy. So which was surprising. I also made a uh, spot here for the, the USB port so I don't have to remove the cover all the time when I want to um, adjust stuff. Even though I have Lewis script and that's what the modification for the smart port was is to use Lewis script on my Tyrannus uh, QX7. Um, you know you still have to, the Lewis script doesn't cover everything in Betaflight so I wanted to make sure I can still be able to uh, connect the uh, board to a computer. I also, if you notice too, to make room, is I took the I took the leads for the wires and laid them off to an angle. I don't know if you can see that. I think you can. So I laid them back right here and I laid them forward in the front. And that made, you know, even more room on the sides of the canopy. So and then I just run my buzzer out the back. And I, and I, I got to be honest with you, I, I don't like this little square buzzer. It really sucks. Um, I wish I had a good little round one. HDLRC has some really good ones in there in theirs, but I've already used them up. So um, I don't know where they're getting theirs, but they're extra loud. This is really quiet. So I just wanted to point that out just in case anybody wants to actually build the poor man's version of the V2 using the Zeus. That's how I modified it. And I actually like it better because you're not running a major support through your boards. Where if you do get a crash like this one, where it bent the screw, I mean it bent, I mean it bent it good too. This thing is like a, a U shape. If that was running through a stack, it would have it would have broke the stack. I guarantee it. Um, it actually hit so hard that it it actually cracked the frame. So that's how much force this thing took. And yet all the electronics, except for the camera right here, you can see it broke the camera. Um, but it took a tremendous amount of force, and the thing still flies. It hit with such force that it literally stripped out three of the screws right out of the right out of the motor, and those were Loctited in. So um, the other thing too is I have everything soft mounted, so the motors are soft mounted. The um, the Zeus is soft mounted using a. Um, which I'm glad I did that. It's using a um, I don't know if you can even see in there. I'm just I'm used to using fuel tubing for from an aircraft. You know, for model aircraft, I just use uh, rubber fuel tubing, and so there's a little bit of sponge to it, and that might have helped in that impact too, not to tear out the board because it actually will fly. Um, it'll still fly. I tested it right after, even with the screws missing. I just wanted to do a quick hover, and it still tried to fly. So I know everything else is good on it. But the camera is now extra, you know, really blurry because of that break. It's the sensor is not lined up anymore to the housing, so looks like I'll be getting a new camera. So I just wanted to point that out, just in case you do want to make this particular build all the way through. You're going to have to drill 
two holes behind the F the Zeus the F4 Zeus and mount some uh, screws in there and these are 40 by 40s inch and a quarter okay and then when you put the top on you just thread the oh and by the way this antenna and this VTX rocks I mean it I'm gonna show that in my flight video how how good this thing is um, and then you can just put the top right back on and um, just line everything up here and then line your screws up and it'll pop right back on I mean this is so bent now I'm gonna have to actually get some new screws so but yeah it just it just goes right back on anyway so I just wanted to point all that out because there was a question in the part one comment section of you know how does the how do you get the canopy on when the Zeus is covering the, the original holes so that that's how I did it all right thank you